G'day folks, welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore from the Learn to Paint Academy with you again. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a painting in acrylics and we're going to do it on paper. And I'll do that at the sitting down desk. And um, we'll just take a little bit more time than what we perhaps normally do and work up a nice little painting. Got a terrific scene for you. It's a scene of a, um, a church um, on a hill. So we'll have a look at that and then I'll take you down and show you the materials and we'll get underway. Okay, so as you can see, you've got that lovely little church on the hill there with the foreground grasses and hill. And you've got that big dominant tree, which makes for an interesting sort of L-shaped composition when you run your eye down the tree and across the hill line there. The, uh, little uh, the church, rather, is all lit up in sunlight, but it's got some nice shadows in there to keep some interest. And it's got a little row of trees behind it, um, which will just add as a bit of a backdrop. And from there, you've got, you know, beautiful blue sky with some wispy clouds. So the clouds can be used to balance against that large tree. So it makes for a really interesting uh, little composition and a subject for us to paint. Okay, so let's have a look at our materials and our setup here. I've got a piece of um, acrylic paper. So this is paper designed for painting on the acrylic. And I've got it taped down onto a, a bit of a core flute board here. So... Um, pretty stock standard, just use some masking tape for that. I'm going to paint in acrylic, so I'm going to use the Artilia Interactives and uh, we'll use the more method of painting. So we're going to use a limited palette. Okay, so I've got my French Ultramarine Blue, my uh, well, Lizard and Crimson, our Yellow Ochre, that's our basic palette, and then our um, Cadmium Yellow Light for the lighter tones and some Titanium White. Now I've also got a new tube of Thalo Green, which I may use just to punch up some of the foliage in the foreground, possibly, but we won't get into that too much. Um, I've got a bucket of water here to clean the brushes out. And I've got, so that one's to clean the water, uh, the brushes, and then this one is if I need to dip into some water to thin out um, the paint, you can do that. And this is my palette here, just a disposable palette for convenience sake. And then I've got this little brush set that I bought. Now um, this is by Montmart. You can see the brand there. Um, little brush set. Um, these are Taclon synthetic brushes. I'm starting to move all of my pattern towards synthetic brushes, which I'll, um, I'll update you on the reason why for that. Um, but we're going to use these. I'm going to keep it really simple. We're going to follow the three steps of the more method of painting and um, show a bit of fun. So basically I'm going to use, as you know, I normally, in the past you've seen me using the hog hair bristle brushes and um, I use the big flats. So that's pretty much what I'm going to use here. I'm going to use this one for drawing and these three are going to make up most of the painting that we'll do here today. Okay, so let's get underway with step one of the more method of painting. And as we always do, step one is our drawing step. So we're going to take some of the blue and the red, mix it together and... I'm going to keep this paint very thin when we start off, right? So, I'm just to get a nice dark tone there. These little tackle on synthetic brushes don't hold a lot of water, right? So, I need to dip in a couple of times in there just to keep scooping up some water. And I, and I want that to be ink like in its consistency, right? So, if you don't want to start off too thick with our paint, with our paint initially. So, if you have a look here, you can see that the uh, the first point to get in is really this rising hill here. Run that line in roughly. Don't worry if it's um, not a perfect line. Just to give an indication of a bit of a hillside there, right? Something like that. You don't want the, the, to be too steep a gradient, otherwise the church will roll down the hill. And um, <laughs> that won't be good for anybody, right? So once we've got that in, our next logical thing to get in is going to be the, the, the church. Now, if you have a look on the photo there you can see it's almost sitting in the middle we don't want it in the middle we want to have it offset so our middle is going to be around about there okay you want to have it slightly offset to give space to that big tree so i would suggest that we're going to have it sit somewhere like here and the front of that's just a little triangle shape there okay and then that runs in like so and that's naturally a wall there. And we come out to there. And see, so you can see why the importance now of keeping that paint fairly um, thin in our initial application is because I can now 
change this drawing quite easily if where I need to. Now don't worry if you don't get the drawing 100% accurate. Um, it'd be nice to, but uh, you know, we're, we're just starting out. We're doing this as a beginner style painting so that anyone can have a go at it, right? So therefore, if you're drawing slightly inaccurate, don't be too fussed about that. We'll put a little bit of a bush there. Okay. And then underneath this, we've got this line of shadow running through there. Okay. There's also shadow running in through there and there. That's the most difficult part of this drawing is getting in that shape there. Okay, if you can get that shape work, working, then, uh, you know, you're home and hose really with this painting. Um, and if you struggle with it, then just get your sketchbook out. And I recommend, highly recommend that you always have a sketchbook handy so that you can uh, practice getting in these unusual sort of shapes that we might have. I've got a feeling I've made it a little bit too big. Maybe that roof line needs to come in through there. And that needs to come there and there. We'll adjust it as part of our block in that. It's the... Um, That's the great thing about paint. We'll just keep moving it around until we're happy with it. Now we'll just run a row of trees along here, but don't make them too much the same size and too uniform. Notice I'm doing them very randomly. They're just a backdrop. We don't need any detail in the backdrop there. Um, so don't fuss too much with that. Okay, we can reshape that when we block in and when we put highlights on. And even when we bring the sky in, we can reshape all of that. Our most uh, dominant part of this picture it's kind of leaning out of the painting you see that it's, or out of the picture it's leaning that way we're going to lean it back in the other way okay so we're going to start at the right about there ignore your background don't worry if you paint over that for now okay we've got this main trunk there and it's always easier to start off with your trunks and things thinner than what you want them and we can make them bigger as we go yeah, they, in fact, they, they have a habit of growing on their own anyway. So it's foliage there. Um, run up some branches in through there. Foliage there. Okay. Something like that. We'll start to s strengthen that up as we, um, as we develop this more. But notice I'm not trying to paint every blade of grass or every leaf. I'm just giving some indications of where the foliage mass is going to be. Now there is a little path that runs that way out of the picture. That's not going to work for us. We're going to run that path and we're going to do it as a very subtle sort of suggestion of a path around about there. Okay, let's do step two. Now step two, we're going to switch to our biggest brush. Now remember these are synthetic brushes. They're not going to um, handle in the same way that the um, hog hair bristle brushes do the natural fiber so we, we need to make allowances for that we want to get in this foreground hill and um, we'll start with that then we'll work back to our distant foliage then we'll do our main tree then we'll do the sky around that so because of our foreground hill is going to be green grasses we need to put in a, uh, a an initial tone a blocking tone for those and I always like to mix up a nice earthy tone with the alizarin crimson and the yellow ochre. Okay, get some water into that so it's nice and thin and loose. Pick up a little bit of that dark from before just to grey it. And with that being, you know, a ready earth tone, um, what will happen is when that dries off and we start to come in and put our green grasses in um, over the top, some of this will reflect through, right? And it'll just create a nice warmth Red is a complement of uh, green, so keep that in mind, right? So there'll be, a, there'll be a harmony there between these colours. And, and keep in mind, this red is simply an underpainting. It's not our final product, although we will hopefully see plenty of that red coming through. Okay, Notice how thin that paint is. Our initial drawing is starting to shine through that already. But that's all we need. Just get that in. Get some interesting shape into that path. Okay. 
and we're good to go. So now I'll give that brush a clean. Okay. Tap it into some dry paper towel. And we're now going to come in and we're going to do, so we'll get that, take our blue, we're going to do that background row of trees here, right? So a little bit of the blue, a little bit of the red, tiny little bit of that yellow. Now, because this is acrylics and, and it's quite a hot, humid day here, as it <laughs> is pretty much every day um, in the studio, we need to work fast because it's going to start to um, start to dry off, which is starting to already on the palette here. I'm going to add some, so I've got mostly blue and red, a little pinhead of yellow just to grey it, and then I'm adding white to tone the value back, right? Now on the palette there, it looks fairly light in value, but if I just get some water with that, remember to keep this mix thin here now, right? And I'm, I'm painting, I don't, haven't painted too much on this acrylic paper. Um, it's like a multimedia paper. Uh, but it's got a really interesting feel to it. It's quite slick, as opposed to a canvas, which um, you know, if you're painting on a canvas, you've got that rough tooth of the canvas pulling the paint off, where this doesn't quite have that. And it's also drying fairly quickly on the paper as well, so quite interesting. So just make sure we get... One of the challenges I find with these synthetic brushes is just getting those interesting little edges out there. But it, We've got plenty of opportunity to shape those up, so I'm not too worried at this stage. Okay, I just don't want to have hard, rounded um, edges. I'm paranoid of painting lollipops for trees, <laughs> round balls with, um, uh, you know, like a stick for the trunk. The way we used to paint them in kindergarten, right, as, as children, we, we want to try and avoid that. And give them as natural a look as we can. Okay, so I'll just run that one up there. Now it is important that that white that I added in here, just to push the value back, you'll see when we come in and do the um, main tree here, it's going to be a fair bit darker. So even though on the palette when we mixed it, it looked fairly light in value, um, I can assure you when we get this next um, next value down, the dark of the tree, that it will um, it'll look right. So let's do that now. I'll just get a little bit of water. I don't have to clean the brush because we're using the same family of hues. So I'll take that blue again, take the red, get a little bit of the yellow, okay, we'll mix those together. Now that's a little bit on the red side, so let's get the blue into that. Okay, you can see that that's darker than this one here. If I pop that there, you can see that's going to stand out. couple of those main trunks in. Don't have to get them all in just yet. We'll, um, we'll okay, because we want fairly clean colour now. We're going to come in and we're going to do the sky. It's a fairly blue sky. We won't worry about the clouds just yet, but we'll get all of that blue. Right, we'll pop it over there. So I've got a nice clean area here to work with. I'll take a chunk of that white. Now it's drying off already. Um, so let's just get a little touch of water in there. Now remember acrylics are going to dry just slightly darker. So I have to run about the tone that I want for my sky. However, I'll add a little bit more white into it because it's going to dry just that little bit darker. Okay. A little bit of water into that, keep it nice and thin, and then let's just come in and paint this in. Now, as I come up to the tree, I've just got to work around these clumps of foliage that I've um, created. I'm just going to be patient with that part. Okay. 
into that as we come down. So this just requires a little bit of patience and a little bit of care because we're not going to get another real chance at getting this gradient of this sky right unless you repaint the whole thing which I'm not inclined to want to do so um just that little bit of care now will keep us in good stead now so it's a fairly dark sky and often you'll find me painting the sky is quite a bit lighter than this um, but i all right, well, folks, that brings us to the end of step two, our blocking. As you can see, we've got all of our colors down. We've set up our values, haven't touched our center of interest yet. We'll do that, um, you know, as we get into step three. I'm pretty happy the way it's all gone. I'm going to let it dry off for 15, 20 minutes, although it's drying pretty rapidly, but just give it a chance to dry bone dry. And then we'll come in, we'll do step three, and you'll see how easy it is to bring this painting together um, as a nice little finished painting. So I'll see you shortly. Okay, let's do step number three now. This is all fully dry. So we're gonna start out, we're just getting that yellow tone for the brick walls there. It's darker on that side, and it's catching most of the light in this side in here. And then there's a bluey white roof. So we'll get that in as our first point of call here. So we'll go for a medium sized flat brush. And um, it's mostly a yellow ochre, a little touch of the muslin and crimson into it and some white just to lighten it back okay probably a little bit more white than that and i don't need to thin this paint down so much now right i'm going to use slightly thicker paint and um we're now sort of going for a more finished look i guess Now, a lot of the colours that I'm using are transparent, so it may require a bit of a going over after we've done the first coat, but we'll just see how we go. Okay, there's that one there. That wall there is in shadow. So let's put the light walls in for the moment. Okay, good. Now we get a slightly darker tone, which I've already mixed. And we'll come and do this wall. Now I'm going to just paint over the doors and sorry the windows and that shadow line because once that's dry we'll come back in and put the shadow and that on there. Got that little foreground bush as well. Okay. And then that wall there is going to be this darker tone again.
Let's get that paint on the very tip there and then we can run it back that way. Okay. So it's just about find that right tone. It's got to be grayed off as well. So it's a tricky one just to get that right tone. And it's not going to look entirely right on the palette here, right? So what we've got to do is just come in here and go, okay, let's just try that. And actually, that's pretty close, isn't it? We um, just want to create a little bit of a foliage tone. I don't want to lose, though, the um, underpainting. I don't want to paint that out. Although some of it is fairly thin paint, so I might have to re-establish some of it. Be careful just around the roof there. into that so now we're coming to this big tree and um, we shall start to establish that a bit more we'll need a, probably a couple of passes Oops. At it to get it right. First thing we'll do is strengthen up the darks. Just because they went on fairly thin during our blocking stage, which is fine. Um, but now we need to just get some more solidity into it, make it a bit more substantial, sort of build it up. One thing I want to try and avoid is having it go a bit too blocky. So just use sort of whimsical little brush marks here and there. So make some of your brush marks more definitive and bold and strong. And then others just, you know, um, wispy. Almost not there, if, if you know what I mean. Get it nice and dark. The darks will help the little um, church there to really pop out more. Some more darks into the ground there. So for these foreground grasses, I'm, I'm not going to really pay too much attention to what's actually in the photo for these. I'm just going to create some sort of interesting marks and you know get some interesting colors down so I'll take this blue let's pop it over our sky tone because it's going to be fairly dry and it's the same base color anyway take some of that green take some of that yellow notice I'm spreading it around here I'm not mixing it all straight in straight away get some of that yellow okay and then let's just work in some different tones here light into some of that as well okay so we've got a variety of different grass tones in there now um, what I think we want to do we want to keep it fairly on the yellowy side so I'll just work that in there and we don't want it to be too bright though let's just see how we go with this 
Okay, now don't just make it all blocky. Leave some of that underpaint to come through. And um, try and just vary your brush marks up. See how the paper itself will pull the paint off the brush. Flick some of those grasses up over the shadow there. Notice I'm not fussing with it too much, being too finicky with it. Getting some big, bold statements down with this grass. Over on this side, I'm going to go a little bit darker. Just to darken up that corner there. A little bit darker up there as well. And some of that darker tone into there. Probably need to get a little touch of that more yellow in through here. It's a bit blocky in there, but hey. A lot of this is actually in shadows foliage, so I don't want to lose that effect. Too much of that red there. When things like that happen, don't panic. I can just let that dry off and we can come back to that. While it is drying off, I will just get in a little bit more work onto these tree branches and so on. Now um, I'm using the Artilia Interactive paints and um, the great advantage of them of course is that what I just did then was I reactivated dried paint. You pro possibly can't do that with uh, every brand of acrylic. I'm not sure but test the brand that you've got to see whether you can. But certainly try the Artilias. Um, you know, I think that's one of their, of their big advantages. Okay, I'm just filling in a little bit more of that dark in there. Strong. 
get that in, but I also want to have that paint thin so it's transparent. So, and then it runs out that way ever so slightly. Okay, and then the same underneath here, it's all in shadow. Chimney, I'll do the chimney simply. Just need to get in here. Notice that I've come up short against. The edge there, and left it a bit too much of a gap. Let's sort of tidy that up. Okay, shadow. Put that around the chimney. Not much left to do on this one. Made good time. Um, just get a little red into that. Catching tree trunk there. And just get a little grey tone in there. Okay, one last little thing that we would do. Just get in a few little fence posts. I'll just use the pure white for this. Let's scoop some of that up. And notice I've got a big rigger brush there. And let's just um, keep it really simple. We don't have to over complicate. This at all. Let's put a little 
rail fence post there, which of course probably indicates that we want a couple in here. Well, there we go, folks. As I said, nice little church in a country scene on a hillside in Australia. Um, easy, simple little painting. So uh, a, a little painting that anybody, regardless of your experience level, could have a go at doing this and produce a similar sort of result. So have a go at this one. Hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of Learn to Paint TV. And uh, we'll see you next week on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers for now.